Valley District of Benin is in the northern part of Benin. It has a very pronounced dry season, six months, rainy season, six months, no rain at all. And this, um, this brings a lot of hardship to the region because agri agricultural production ceases and people are subsisting on what they've already produced um, and trying to sort of make it through the lean season. So the Solar Electric Light Fund, um, approached by uh, the local development organization, decided to implement a district-wide electrification project. And one half of the project um, in each village would be to um, install a solar-powered drip irrigation system. So we're working in two villages and we've installed three systems, two in one, one in the other. In terms of installation, we started in June and finished in October and we trained a team of five um, electricians and mechanics uh, to do the installation and maintenance and they run the entire project now uh, locally. So the systems are quite simple to maintain. They're directly coupled systems, just panels, directly powering pumps, no battery. That said, we also do have um, you know, a ready supply of spare parts. And the other thing is because we have now established a long-term partnership with this district, we will be in contact um, for years and decades. There is no just putting this thing in the ground and leaving. <laughs> All right. We've hit water. <laughs> the boreholes hit water and everyone was really excited. Um, Dunkas is a village that, that really does sort of feel a water shortage. Everyone came running and <laughs> was so excited to drink out of the well. <laughs> this is the president of the Women's Association in Dunkasa. <laughs> a very cool lady. Women are predominantly responsible for hauling all water for household needs. Women traditionally will, you know, haul water for many hours uh, a day just to keep a few beds of vegetables going during the dry season. Self and Stanford began this collaboration because um, as a development organization, Self doesn't have the capacity or the funds with which to necessarily properly evaluate their projects. And this is a problem that many development agencies face. They, they can't really afford to do surveys, surveys are expensive, um, and to properly sort of monitor and follow up on their projects. So the EVP has been critical for us in that it makes up the marginal cost of doing this kind of impact evaluation properly. They've now been in operation for an entire dry season uh, and on average the women earned um, almost four dollars a week uh, through their vegetable sales, between three and four dollars per week and for families making, you know, living on a dollar or two a day, um, this is a huge increase in in, uh, in income. There's consensus in people who, who do want to do development work that it's a fundamentally interdisciplinary project. Um, health is related to income, is related to education, is related to infrastructure, um, and maybe you call this a poverty trap or maybe you call it things that are correlated with each other, but it is all related. And um, any sort of intervention, if it is to be successful, probably needs to be multi-sectoral, which means that it really is a fundamentally interdisciplinary problem and something like the EVP was really helpful for us um, in terms of uh, bringing together a team who could really address this problem, figure out the best way to measure the impact of a technological intervention and to hopefully create a model whereby others can do the same.